we have two vaccines uh, which are currently available uh, and these are uh, developed by international companies Merck and, and, and GlaxoSmithKline uh, and for a single dose of these vaccines uh, you would need to spend anywhere between uh, 3000 to 4000 rupees uh, whereas if you look at the indigenous vaccine um, that is going to cost you only between 200 to 400 rupees per dose uh, so if you see there's almost a, a 10 times um, uh, a difference in the price uh, and and that is going to be a very big factor and a game changer cervical cancer one of the major causes is the human papilloma virus uh, and this vaccine is effective uh, against both the dominant strains of the human papilloma virus that cause cervical cancer uh, so we can actually reach a situation where we end up uh, eliminating a majority of cervical cancer cases from the country uh, and and as as i mentioned with the statistics at the beginning uh, that would mean that we can save uh, you know, a lot of lives, uh, both in terms of, you know, quality of life as well as, you know, actual lives saved. Namaste and welcome to the Current Affairs Show. My name is Payal and I am your host today. I am here with a very special guest, Urvashi Pusadji. Urvashi ji works in a senior role in an organization called Niti Ayog. Urvashi ji, how are you today? I'm very well. Thank you for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to this interview. Um, so before we get into the topic, I wanted to ask you a question on um, Niti Ayog and its um, work it does with the government. So. Um, just in in, a, in brief, would you like to just explain? Yeah, so the Niti Aayog is the government's premier policy think tank. Um, it is chaired by the prime minister um, and the vice chairperson is a cabinet minister rank uh, official. And the mandate of Niti Aayog is to work with all the central government ministries as well as all the state governments uh, to... Uh, look at different policy issues in various sectors. Um, and it is also mandated to foster cooperative federalism. Uh, so essentially, that means uh, to foster relationships between the center and the state governments. Um, and within Niti Aayog, I work on the social sector areas. Uh, so these are sectors related to health, nutrition, uh, sanitation, and gender. Excellent. Wow, that's um, so. There's a there's a lot of um, integration with the government. So, would are you a private um, company which works with the government, or are you uh, you is a, are you owned by the government? How does it work? Yeah, this so this is the government's own think tank, uh, mm -hmm. the central government's think tank, and it's uh, chaired by our prime minister. Uh, he is the chairperson and the governing council of Niti Aayog comprises of all the chief ministers uh, and all the lieutenant governors in the country. Uh, so in that sense, it is really the highest, uh, the apex policy making body in the country. Amazing. Wow. So um, let's dive into the, um, the topic now of uh, today, which is uh, the new anti-cervical cancer vaccine which India has discovered. Uh, so um, it's, uh, it's amazing um, from what I hear and very exciting indeed. Um, so before we go into the actual vaccine, let's just get a little brief on um, cervical cancer itself and how it affects women and how many women are affected in India uh, per year and um, is this number increasing do you think? So uh, cervical cancer is uh, actually the second most uh, common cancer uh, amongst women uh, between the ages of 15 to 44 um, and there are around 125,000 uh, cases of cervical cancer in India every year. Uh, and there are unfortunately uh, around 70 to 75,000 fatalities. Uh, the, the incidence of cervical cancer has fortunately been declining um, slightly in India. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, as the statistics suggest, 
uh, it remains a very major health challenge for women uh, and it is definitely a disease uh, which has a major burden uh, both in terms of causing illness as well as fatality uh, and it also affects the quality of life uh, of many women uh, and their families uh, so to that extent it's a very important disease that we need to try uh, and eliminate uh, and it is in fact a preventable disease um, so it's very possible to eliminate this disease from the country excellent so um if, so another question on this is uh, cervical uh, cancer screening uh, so a lot of countries around the world do do this and offer it you know every three years uh, to women and and if you don't go for your appointment you're chased upon chased by the gps um so um is this something which is available in india and um if so um how prominent is it and do people do do the women actually go for screening so yes cervical screening um, is available and in fact it's part of the national uh, government's program as well uh, we have a program on control of uh, non communicable diseases including cancer uh, and that includes a screening for cervical cancers um, there there is a particular technique which is called visual examination by acetic acid uh, and and that is the screening uh, method uh, which is adopted um, in fact now the government is also setting up health and wellness centers across the country uh, under the ayushman bharat program uh, which is a flagship uh, health program of the government of india uh, and at these health and wellness centers uh the system is also supposed to provide screening for different cancers uh including cervical cancer uh so around 120000 such centers have been set up across the country uh and by the end of this year we hope to have around 150000 uh, health and wellness centers across the country so the idea is that these centers will provide screening uh, for different types of cancer including cervical cancer uh india also now has a health insurance scheme um and that is important because that covers treatment uh, for different types of cancers uh, so in case you have been detected uh, with cervical cancer then you can get uh, and and if you are belonging to an underprivileged family to a poor family uh, then you can get treatment under this insurance scheme at an impaneled hospital across the country so india both has programs for screening as well as treatment uh, of cervical cancer uh, and it's definitely uh, integrated into our national program that's brilliant that is there is there enough awareness of this though um do you feel or do you think more awareness needs to happen yeah so you you hit upon a very major challenge uh, which is awareness uh, there is limited awareness uh, about this disease is about its repercussions uh, about you know why uh, is it so significant um, and why we need to take action uh, with respect to this there is also a lot of social stigma uh, whenever we talk about cancer in general uh, but especially when we talk about a cancer uh, which affects women uh, you know predominantly there is a lot of social stigma and a lot of hesitation uh, a lot of women are hesitant to come forward and to get screened so i think the big challenge for us is um, not just addressing the supply side issues uh, but we actually need to address the demand side um, and we need to create awareness and we need to make sure that there is a demand uh, for cervical cancer services across the country okay i'm so glad that there's work happening behind the scenes um that you know most of us are just not even aware of so that some um, really really insightful and uh, so now on to the main topic of the actual vaccine that um has just been discovered so what is the difference between this vaccine and other cervical cancer vaccines which are there in in the world um so what would you say are the main differences yeah so the main difference is is uh, actually the price um and and which is what makes this indigenous vaccine vaccine much more affordable and accessible uh, so if you look at it we have two vaccines uh, which are currently available uh, and these are uh, developed by international companies merck and and, and glaxo smith kline uh, 
uh, and for a single dose of these vaccines uh, you would need to spend anywhere between uh, 3000 to 4000 rupees uh, whereas if you look at the indigenous vaccine um, that is going to cost you only between 200 to 400 rupees per dose uh, so if you see there's almost a, a 10 times um, a difference in the price uh, and and that is going to be a very big factor and a game changer uh, because in India, where you need to roll out the vaccination at scale, uh, there are 50 million girls in India between the ages of 9 and 14. Um, and if you want to roll out the vaccination to all of them, uh, then you need to have a vaccine which is very affordable. Uh, so the big game-changing factor about this vaccine is that it is much more affordable, much more accessible. Uh, and in that sense, it is much more suitable for the Indian market. Excellent. That's good to know. I mean, the price, that's a huge price difference. So um, this is going to be definitely a game changer, I can see. Um, so, how, well, on the same question, so how many lives do you think this will save then? Yeah, so, you know, as I said, that if we can roll this out uh, in, in to all the 50 million, uh, you know, girls that we have between the age group of 9 to 14, uh, and also try and, you know, make it reach uh, older girls uh, and, and women, uh, who so far not been covered, um, then eventually we can reach a stage where we can prevent most cases of cervical cancer. Um, because cervical cancer, one of the major causes is the human papilloma virus. Uh, and this vaccine is effective uh, against both the dominant strains of the human papilloma virus that cause cervical cancer. Uh, so we can actually reach a situation where we end up uh, eliminating a majority of cervical cancer cases from the country. Uh, and and as, as I mentioned with the statistics at the beginning, uh, that would mean that we can save, uh, you know, a lot of lives, uh, both in terms of, you know, quality of life as well as, you know, actual lives saved. Uh, so I think the vaccine can actually have a very tremendous impact uh, if it is rolled out across the country. Excellent. So is that the government's plan, do you think, to roll it out um, to everyone uh, on every on every level? Um, and would it be free? So what is the um, it, what's the practical plans in rolling it out? Yeah, so the government's current plan is to roll it out as part of the government program itself. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, we have a lot of national programs uh, for cancer control as well as other programs uh, you know for promoting adolescent health uh, and this vaccine can really be integrated into all those programs uh, and it can be delivered through multiple channels within the government you know like i mentioned the health and wellness centers uh, you can also potentially deliver it in schools uh, to adolescent girls uh, so the definitely the plan is to first roll it out through the government system uh, uh, and is the Serum Institute plans to produce around 200 million doses uh, of this vaccine in around two years. Uh, so we should have a very large supply of this vaccine in the country. Uh, and eventually that, that would mean that the private sector will also get involved. Uh, so it will not be limited to the government space, um, but eventually the government will also involve the private sector so that there can be much better coverage uh, with the vaccine across the country. Uh, so I'm hopeful that, you know, in a couple of years or so, uh, we will see a very high level of coverage, you know, both within the government sector uh, as well as through the private sector players. Excellent. That sounds um, very promising. And, um, you know, uh, it just, it's exciting because I think um, it's exactly what um, we need to do to um, crack onto this, uh, onto cervical cancer. Because um, I, I really was not aware that it was the second most um, prominent cancer. Um, so, well, yes, um, that's uh, really good news. It's really, really good news. So thank you so much for sharing um, on this topic. Um, before we finish, I wanted to just get a little idea on the COVID situation. Um, so what is the current COVID situation scenario in terms of um, how the government is thinking about things? And um, any further COVID initiatives um, then they also might be thinking of. Yes, in fact, uh, you know, we've also seen a landmark development in the COVID space. Uh, India has just given uh, emergency authorization to its first intranasal vaccine for COVID. Uh, 
Um, so this is a very big step, you know, because it means that you don't have to have an injection, uh, but you can have a nasal vaccine. So right now, of course, it's an emergency uh, limited authorization uh, for those who are above 18 years of age, but, but it's a huge step. Uh, if we look at science and technology in the country, uh, this is a really, really big step. Uh, so mm -hmm. the government is definitely continuing its vaccination program for COVID in a big way. Uh, over 200 crore doses of the vaccination have already been delivered. Uh, and uh, the vaccination program is continuing with, with uh, people now receiving what we call precautionary doses. Uh, and now, of course, we hope that with the nasal vaccine uh, getting approval as well, it should further uh, help to ramp up the vaccination program. Uh, but the COVID situation is currently uh, relatively under control. Uh, we are seeing about 5,000 uh, new cases across the country per uh, on a daily basis. And we have around a total of 50,000 active cases in the country right now. Um, but it's really, uh, it's relatively under control. The testing positivity rate is not very high. Um, and the vaccination program uh, is definitely continuing to uh, accelerate. So overall, I think uh, we are in a reasonable position when it comes to COVID. Uh, but of course, it remains an unpredictable disease. Uh, so we always need to remain vigilant uh, and, and we need to make sure that we continue uh, with our COVID vaccination efforts uh, so that we can protect as many people as possible. Uh, and we just need to keep an eye out for any new strains or any new developments. Um, but currently, uh, the situation in the country is fairly under control. Thank you. That's so reassuring uh, to know. So uh, that's that's um, a really nice update on the COVID situation. So that's all, Urvashiji. Um, thank you so much um, for the information. And um, I wish all the best for um, the well, both vaccine implementations. I hope it all goes successfully. And um, thank you for the audience for watching. Namaste to all. And please do subscribe. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.